sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from every fear those who look on him are radiant and never be ashamed and never be Ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard me and saved me from my enemies. The Son of God surrounds his sin. Isaiah 40, 1 through 11 today. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and announce to her that her time of forced labor is over. Her iniquity has been pardoned, and she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one crying out, prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness. Make a straight highway for our God in the desert. Every valley will be lifted up, and every mountain and hill will be leveled. The uneven ground will become smooth, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will appear, and all humanity together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice was saying, Cry out. Another said, What should I cry out? All humanity is grass and all its goodness is like a flower in the field. The grass withers, the flowers fade, when the breath of the Lord blows on them. Indeed, the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God remains forever. Zion, herald of good news, go up on a high mountain. Jerusalem, herald of good news, raise your voice loudly. Raise it, do not be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with strength, and his power establishes his rule. His wages are with him, and his reward accompanies him. He protects his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arm and carries them in the fold of his garment. He gently leads those that are nursing.
Isaiah 40, 1. Good morning. Welcome to Creepwood Online. I'm so honored that you are worshiping with us this morning, and I hope that you're singing with all of your hearts in your homes. I hope that you're praying and that you're expecting to hear a word from the Lord uh, this week. Well, it's been a crazy week uh, around here between snow and then... Um, uh, y'all were supposed to be here this weekend, but it didn't work out. But next weekend, you will be here in person, and we are so excited uh, to have y'all come and worship in person. We'll, of course, keep our online option available for those of you who do not feel comfortable quite yet coming into uh, the worship service. Well, y'all, we're still, if you wish to uh, give to our hunger fund, uh, that we are, we've collected about $5,000 so far. Um, and in, in, in being able to feed families from around here, we've expanded our list quite a bit. And so we hope to be able to feed around 60 to 70 families uh, in this area who have suffered from food insecurity. Thanks to your generosity, it's been unbelievable. So thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to be the hands and feet of Christ, to be the presence of Christ in, here in South Nashville. Y'all, if you would like to give to Creepwood, uh, you can go to creepwood.org slash give. You can go to the Realm Giving app, uh, the Realm app, and do the giving tab. You can text Creepwood to 73256, or you can mail your checks in to 480 Hogan Road. That's 480 Hogan Road. Well, y'all, this week, uh, we've seen heartbreak around the country. We've seen heartbreak in our neighborhood and in our church. And so would you just join me right now in prayer um, for those hurting all around us. I pray specifically now for our brothers and six sisters down in Texas who have uh, suffered this week with, with water and Now, if y'all would, if you'd lift up the Martin family, uh, they're connected to a lot of families here in Creep Hall. Uh, they had a tragedy happen in their family. If you would lift them up uh, today. Here in our church, if you would lift up the McGee family. As they're dealing with the loss of Jeff. Our God, we're grateful to be in your presence this morning. I pray that in our homes that you will transform them into little churches, that they may be sanctuaries of praise. We pray for our brothers and sisters down in Texas. Pray for those who have lost things to bursted pipes. Uh, I, I, I pray for families who are still scrambling to find water. I, I, I pray your blessing on them. Pray for the churches down there as they seek to minister. God, we lift up the Martin family today. We lift up the McGee family today. We pray that they'd hear the words of Jesus, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And God, we lift up Creepwood today. We pray that we will continue to figure out where you want us in the kingdom of God. I pray that we'll continue to be your presence, to proclaim your good news to the world. And God, we pray as our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. That's my prayer for you 
of this season of Lent, that our souls would be still in God, that we would find our rest. If you have a Bible at home, I invite you to turn to Matthew 11. Matthew 11, we're going to read verses 25 through 30 here in the moment. This is the first Sunday in a season called Lent. Lent is the 40 days uh, before Easter, leading up to Easter. It's the journey to the cross. It's the journey to Holy Week. It's the journey to the passion of Jesus that gives way to the new life and resurrection that comes from Jesus Christ. Now, most of the time, uh, Christians throughout all denominations, uh, many different denominations participate in this, um, Christians typically give up something or fast, they sacrifice something uh, in order to identify with Jesus' sacrifice in some way. So sometimes it's chocolate for some people, sometimes it's coffee, sometimes it's meat, sometimes it's social media, which may be good for all of us right now. Um, but when I was a children's minister, we, we did a fast well, one week fast with our kids. We asked them to bring something on uh, Sunday before Easter and that would that would symbol a sacrifice uh, for them. And the kids brought in something. Uh, and one kid, a kid that I knew pretty well, a kid named Clint, he brought in his Wii. It, I thought that meant that he was giving up video games for the week. And I thought, wow, what a sacrifice for a 10-year-old, 11-year-old boy to give up video games for a whole week. That's amazing. Like, he's, he's getting it. I was friends with his older brother, and so we were hanging out later on that week. And I went over to their house, and there's Clint playing Madden NFL. I said, Clint, what are you doing? I thought you were giving up video games for the week. He said, ah, I only gave up my Wii. I never said anything about my PlayStation, which <laughs> it was cute, and I thought it was funny. And then sometimes that's kind of the way that we approach lit. But I, I got to admit, this year, uh, this year I come to this season pretty tired. Uh, kind of feels like we've been in Lent for a year, hasn't it? We've given up a lot, uh, even here with y'all this week. You were supposed to be here. I was supposed to be looking at your smiling masked faces here this week, uh, but, but, you're, but you're not. Um, I, I don't know if anybody are like there with me, but my, my soul's tired right now. It just is. Uh, I'm tired of, of this pandemic. I'm tired of uh, racial strife plus pandemic. I'm tired of a pandemic plus crazy weather. And, I, and it's just, it's just I don't know about y'all, it's starting to wear on me a little bit. Um, I hope I'm not alone in that. I don't think that I am. Uh, according to the WHO this past week, the World Health Organization, uh, they sent out a study this past week that they th- are estimating one in every three adults worldwide, not just, not just the United States, not just Europe, one in every three adults worldwide has experienced depression during the pandemic. Collectively, as a world, we're finding our souls to be tired. If that's you here today, this message, this series, is for you. And if that's you here today, you've been dealing with some depression, that is nothing to be ashamed about. Nothing to be ashamed about. If you're here today and you're dealing with just frustration at the way that the world is right now, there's nothing to be ashamed about. It. We're often, most of the time, human beings are emotional creatures before we are logical thinking creatures. And so we have to give space to that. In fact, most of our thoughts come from our emotions if we're being honest with ourselves. We've been in a crisis. We've been in panic mode for the past year. I'm going to read about a passage today where Jesus understood the coming crisis of what was about to happen in his life. And this was his prayer, and this is his response, and it's a word that we need uh, this morning. Here's what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, starting verse 25. He says, at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You've hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them. To the little children. Yes, Father, this is what you were pleased to do. 
All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son and those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. So come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Would you join me in prayer? Our God, open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear. Open our hearts to receive a word from you. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This passage that we just read comes at a crucial point in Matthew's gospel. Jesus had just found out that John the Baptist had been arrested. Some of John's disciples came and asked him, Jesus, are you really the one? Are you really the one who is the Messiah? Are you really the one who is sent by God to save the world? And now Jesus knows. Now Jesus knows that the clock is ticking. He knows where this is headed. He knows that this now is headed toward the cross. Where on the cross, Jesus would take up the sins of the world. Where on the cross, he would be betrayed and abandoned by his friends, by his disciples. Where on the cross, Jesus would be mocked and spit upon and insulted. Where on the cross, Jesus would experience social isolation and loneliness. But it was through the cross. It was through the cross that the world would be saved. And it was on the other side of the cross on the third day that Christ would rise again. That's when you put your faith in him. That you find yourselves having new life. Jesus knows where this is heading. And he knows He knows that somehow, this is the paradox of Jesus, he knows that somehow that the way of the cross leads to soul rest. That somehow, that somehow the way of the cross leads to soul rest. In the next few chapters, until Jesus heads into Jerusalem, he's going to encounter the wounded the worn out, and the weary. And he's going to give them this invitation. Come to me. Come to me, all you who are labored and heavy laden. Man, I'm going to give you rest. In the next passage, he's going to heal a man with a shriveled hand on the Sabbath day. A few passages later, he's going to feed 4,000 people after having compassion upon them and healing their sick. He's going to encounter a demon-possessed boy that the disciples had given up on. And even a rich young ruler who couldn't get out of the rat race. He's going to encounter, as he's walking into Jerusalem, two blind men who just want to be heard, who just want to see, who want to be included. He's going to enter Jerusalem as a peaceful king, as a peaceful Messiah, and he's going to go straight to the temple, and yes, he's going to clear it out, he's going to have this prophetic action, this prophetic pronouncement, but, but in doing so, he brings in the lying and the, the blind, the lame, and the deaf, people who were excluded from the worship of God in the temple, and he's going to heal them right there in the temple. Come to me. Come to me, those of you who are weary and heavy laden, man, and I'm, I'm going to give you rest. I'm going to give you rest from this. 
All those who have been carrying around the burdens of this world. All those who have been carrying around shame. All those who have been carrying around sin. All those who have been carrying around the labels that other people put on you. All those who have been carrying around that thing you did five years ago. All those who have been carrying this around come to me. All those who in the past year have seen income disappear. Come to me. All those in the past year who've had to mourn in isolation because you can't be around other people, come to me. All those who have, because of your vulnerable age or your vulnerable disease, have been isolated from folks, come to me. I'll give you rest. All those of you who have been relying on your medicators and your secret sins. Come to me. Come to me. I'll, I'll give you rest. Take, take my yoke. Take my yoke. Let me walk with you. Now, oftentimes when you know, modern readers, especially younger folks, when we read this, we think like an egg yolk. It's not an egg yolk. It's a, it's a, it's an instrument that's used to plow. Ox used these; they were tied together. It's a producing instrument. It's a walking instrument. Take, take my yoke. What, what's he talking about? He's, he's talking about the servant on the mount here. The way that Jesus taught you to live, and instead of living with anger, live with love. Instead of carrying bitterness in your heart, love your enemies and forgive those who persecute you. Instead of trying to show off your religious piety, do it in secret. Do it for the Father, the audience of one. Instead of worrying about whether or not your bills are going to get paid tomorrow, trust in the Father who cares for the birds of the air. <laughs> Come to me. I'll give you rest. Take, take my yoke upon you. The yoke is easy. The word easy is actually could be translated as kindness. For I'm gentle and humble. Jesus' yoke is kind. He's gentle. He's humble. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Yet he's gentle and humble. And I, I will give you rest. You'll find your soul at rest with me. I love Eugene Peterson's translations, the message Bible. Uh, Y'all know my affection for it if you know me very well. I love how he, how he talks about this. He says, walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. The way of the cross leads to soul rest. The way of the cross gives soul rest. I wonder how many of you at home right now You need to hear the words, and you want to learn how to live freely and lightly. Learn to live freely and lightly. Come to me, Jesus says. I'll I'll give you rest. Now, it's interesting, that word rest there is the same word that we find in Genesis 2 when God rested on the Sabbath day. See, Jesus' rest puts you in tune with creation, puts you in tune with the creator of the world. So yeah, you may be doing hard work, yeah, you may be doing tough soul work, but guess what? You will always be refreshed, you will always be renewed, you will always be comforted because, because you're with Jesus. You may be lonely right now, Jesus is with you. You may be worried about the future right now. Jesus is with you. You Your soul may be tired right now, y'all. 
Jesus is with you. And because Jesus is with you, you can find rest. It's a great theologian back way back when the fourth century, a guy named Augustine. And he has a book called Confessions. If you've never read it, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, kind of an autobiography. And in it, he has this prayer. God, our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. My prayer for you today. you'd find your rest in Jesus. That you'd find peace in Jesus because somehow, somehow the way of the cross gives soul rest. By the way, it's one of the visions of our church. At the back of the church, there's an iron sign. It says, our invitation. Those who are weary and need rest those who are lonely and need friends, to those who sin and need a Savior. This church opens wide its doors to you. We actually got that from a bulletin from the 1980s. In the early 1980s, I was doing some research in the history room one day and ran across that. And we we kind of reclaimed it. We put it back in the back in the pastor's corner. Because when we want people to walk in here, I want people to breathe easy and to be refreshed by the Spirit of God and know that Jesus is here. When you come in here next week, I want you to experience that rest. I want you to help other people as they walk in here. Some people will be grieving. Some people will be worried. Some people uh, will be joyful. Some people will be lonely and need to be around other folks. Guess what? We have the chance. We have the chance to point people to the cross, which gives soul rest. Will you join us? Will you join us on this journey with Jesus, on the unhurried rhythms of grace that will give your soul rest? Let's pray today. Our God, that is our invitation. To those who are tired, whose souls are tired, God, may they find their rest in you. Those whose hearts are restless, may they find their rest in you. Those who are lonely and need friends, may they find you. Those who sin and need a Savior, God, may you come close to them now. May they receive your grace, your salvation, your peace. God, help us to be a church. Help us to be a church that lives in into that rest together. Jesus, I thank you for this. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
I'm so honored that you worshiped with us today. If you would like to connect with us, maybe you're worshiping with us maybe the first or second time, uh, you can go to creevewood.org slash connect. I would love to get to know your story and to hear about you a little bit more. I hope to see you all here next week in person. And let me bless you and we'll be dismissed. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his countenance towards you, give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.